Okay. But there was a negative view, you say, that you had. That's correct. Pretty well, I think you said, shared by others in the Sikh community? That's correct. Okay. Generally felt that way. That's right. So the chances are that if there would have been efforts made, even in the investigation, as members of, of the RCMP or even CSIS would try to speak to members of the Sikh community in Canada, to try to share information, it would be difficult to get that information simply because of the distrust. Is that possible? Uh, for the, uh, I will say it's possible when it comes to the community at large, but there were still uh, some people who they paid for uh, and collect the information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would have been very difficult in post-1985 days, during those few years, those yeah, early well, years and into the investigation Yeah, phase. once the community learned that there's people who got killed in India because of uh, the investigation here, yes, the community was reluctant to talk to the security forces. And they felt convinced that it was as a result of the information provided to the authorities here in Canada. That's correct. I'm still convinced. Today, there's less of a reluctance, you believe, you say, because there are members of the East Asian community that are? Yes, that's, uh, I will say, uh, patching up some uh, mistrust, yes. Come on, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sada. Thank you. All my questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. My name is Barney Brucker, sir. I appear for the Attorney General of Canada. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate you for having the good sense to get out of law at an early age. So, I, I wish you were around when I was your age. A <laughs> <clears throat> um, couple of things, sir. When you say community, uh, what do you mean? Are you, are you, is, it, is it the Sikh community or is it the South Asian community? What, what is your sense it's of community? It's a Sikh community, not South okay. Asian community. It's a Canadian Sikh community right. who live here. And you've lived, uh, since you came to Canada, mo in the Toronto area, or have you lived elsewhere in Canada? I most of my life live in Toronto area and the Brampton. Right. You said, if I understood you correctly, that um, the uh, Sikh community uh, had a mistrust of the police. And if I heard you correctly, you said after the Golden Temple incident, and then again uh, after Air India. Did I hear that uh, right? After Air India. Right. So the Golden Temple uh, incident had nothing to do with the because relationship with the police? I didn't see much interaction with the community by the uh, Canadian forces at that time. Okay. And I, I suggest to you, sir, that um, the manner in which uh, Sikh, the Sikh population uh, in India, the Punjab, uh, viewed the police um, was uh, with a, I don't know if disdain is the right word, but uh, they didn't trust the police at all. The police were, were uh, felt uh, to be largely corrupt that's in India. Correct. Is that fair? That's correct. Right. And that's the attitude that... Um, growing up in the Punjab and, and living under those conditions that came with those people to Canada. Is that not fair? Uh, I think there could be a little percentage which uh, could be applied, but there's a lot of people like me who were very young and never have interaction with the police, and we, we, we didn't never cared in our student life about what the uh, police does or uh, are they corrupt or not. Like, uh, and uh, that didn't make my any opinion in Punjab, but uh, my opinion made specifically in Canada. And you heard, uh, I think you were sitting in the room when uh, Mr. Fryman was uh, reading in those documents. Um, yes. And one of the, uh, talking about the Kalo incident, he described the, uh, the plot uh, to uh, uh, kidnap uh, the child of uh, a member of uh, the Indian Parliament and uh, put a bomb, have that person put a bomb to blow up the... Uh, Indian Parliament buildings, uh, uh, accepting that that was the plot for the moment, mm -hmm. you, you regard that as a, a pretty serious threat, do you not? 
I don't know the full information, but these kind of things were uh, talked a lot in our community. Okay. Even the people who were just having a dinner party and people sitting there do talk these things too. But uh, I, d I, I don't think that th those were for materializing that. Uh, okay. Well, I asked you to, to uh, assume for the moment that that was uh, the plan, that, that, that there were plans afoot to commit an act like this. Um, if that was the case, do you think that that is something that uh, if you'd heard about that in the, in the community, you would bring to the attention of the police? If I assume, it depends like uh, how, how serious it is, that's, yes, I will. Uh... Well, do you not think that's a pretty serious plot to blow up the Indian Parliament buildings? But if I assume, then yes. So you wouldn't have any problem trusting the police in those circumstances, the Canadian police? No, Canadian police uh, lost their mis uh, trust in, in the community when uh, the people got killed in Punjab because of their information transferred to that uh, authority in so, India. So even after that, if you learned of, uh, after this was uh, sometime we think in, uh, or we know in June of 1986 that this incident happened in India that you're talking about, yeah. from that point on then, if you heard of a, a serious threat uh, that would result or could result in the loss of life in India, you still wouldn't go to the police? But I said previously, yes, I will, if I assume, yes. But if that is not serious, I know that the whole community is uh, upset because of, very angry because of 1984, and if they talk between themselves like they can do this or that, I, I never took that serious. I see. Thank you, sir. Thank you, um, Mr. Sahoda. I have uh, no questions by way of examination. I don't know, Mr. Commissioner, if you have any questions, but thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's. Um